Kaplan here at Bass. And you're going to get to hear one of our touring groups, the Ambassadors. It's a group of 10 students who travel throughout the conference and put on church services around the conferences. And so you're going to be blessed this morning by their beautiful music. If you would stand with me this morning, we'll get started with an opening prayer. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for another beautiful Sabbath day. Thank you for the wonderful camp meeting that we have had so far and all the blessings that we have received. And I pray now this morning on your Sabbath day that we will gain another blessing throughout today's programs. Continue to guide and direct and bless each one of us throughout this conference and continue to pour out your blessings on all of us. I pray this in your name. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, happy Sabbath. Our first hymn of worship is Blessed Assurance, the first and last verse, Blessed Assurance. Him is Be Thou My Vision, 547, first, second, and last verse.
last song will be Jesus Paid It All, the first, third, and fourth verses.
rehearse that part. Morning. I'm Raylene Brower, and I have the best job at Bass. I'm the Director of Enrollment and Development, which means that I've met many of you as you're teaching church school. I've met you as parents. I've met you as pastors. And I'm looking forward to meeting the rest of the people I haven't met yet because we serve an amazing God in the Gulf States Conference. He's alive and well. You just witnessed our select choir singing group called the Ambassadors. Um, they are the ones that Mr. Bowes re referenced at the beginning of Sabbath school. Um, isn't it amazing? We have teenagers who show up on Sabbath morning and want to worship God. Yes. I'd like to tell you just a little bit about our program here at Bass. We never like to make assumptions. How many of you graduated from Bass, and you're alums. Anybody here today? Several. How many of you are brand new baby Christians, baby Adventists, and you don't know much about where you are today? Anybody here? There's a few. So we never like to make assumptions, and I'd like to just walk you through a little bit about the programs and life here at Bass Memorial Academy. We definitely have a mission. Our mission is uh, multiple facets of life. We try to, we truly believe in educating the entire whole person. So you'll see a number of different initiatives that we have. But first and foremost, we're more than a high school. There are a lot of those, even in our local area. So our primary purpose is to develop a love for Jesus, show our children who Jesus is, and help them to develop a forever friendship with him that forever friend, that we're never alone, that he will never leave us, that you just heard about in the songs a minute ago. So that's our first and foremost mission. How do we do that? Obviously, we have religious education through our Bible classes here. That's a required course for graduation. But beyond the classroom, how do we model and how do we inspire our students to seek out God and that relationship with him? In addition to worshiping on a regular basis at the church across from um, our center campus here on, on the Bass campus, once a year or twice a year we do outdoor church. There's a wonderful state park about 20 minutes away. It's awesome to get out into nature, isn't it? Especially if you live in a city, this is nature. And we take it another step farther and get a little bit more secluded for our outdoor services. Every Wednesday night our students have the option of going across to the church for prayer meeting or they can choose to join a small group study. This is student-led. Our Pastor Ramos, our campus chaplain, carefully vets and selects and trains our students how to lead out in small group discussions. This year, they've been going through messages to young people and some of the other um, of Ellen White's books to get a better idea of what is her model for healthy living. Uh, we also are involved in a lot of outreach activities. That might include going across the road to Lamar Healthcare and visiting with the residents there and sharing with them. It might involve uh, making cards. It might involve going to one of our neighboring towns, visiting with people there. Um, it takes on a lot of different forms, but we love to help our kids learn that they are already the hands and feet of Jesus. We don't need to wait until they're adults and they're out of school. They are that right now. Another thing that happened this year that was a little unplanned, but we rose to the occasion was, you remember the terrible flooding in the Baton Rouge area? Uh, we had a bus load of volunteer students who gave up their Sunday to go and help, specifically at the Denham Springs Church. They had eight feet of standing water in their church. Um, when all those waters receded, they really did not know if the church was salvageable or not. Our students were able to go and be part of removing every single thing right down to the studs, the church, the Sabbath school rooms, and everything that that meant, hymnals, pews, literature, Sabbath school supplies, everything had to be carried out and put at the curb. I will give you an update on that story. I saw the pastor of that church recently at Louisiana camp meeting. And he said at that time they were really unsure if the insurance adjusters would condemn the building or allow them to rebuild. They have been able to rebuild and very soon they'll be meeting again 
back in their sanctuary. And it's our hope that the same students and maybe some more from Bass will be able to go and worship with them at the beginning of next school year because there's joy in celebrating the good things that come out of bad. You know, Bass is a living example of that. How many of you were present, lived here, and knew about and lived through Katrina? A lot of you. You're witnessing today the fact that good things come out of terrible disasters. Uh, this campus was decimated, but through the gifts um, of a lot of people and the leading of God, I believe it is a miracle the way Katrina devastated us, but God helped put us back together, and we're stronger than ever. This uh, spring break, we had 11 students that volunteered to go on a mission trip. Uh, we partnered with the Share Him program out of the Carolina Conference. So what our students knew was each one of them was assigned a various church in the town of Hatumayor, Dominican Republic. Did I murder that or did I say that all right? Okay, good. I'm not a Spanish-speaking person. Each student had their own translator. They prepared their own sermons off of a script, and they preached as, along with Pastor Ramos. He had his own tent church. In the city, they, they literally took uh, tarps and created a tent in the middle of the street. So he had people sitting in the tent, and he had neighbors, that's how close the street was, sitting on their front porch listening to the sermons every night. At the conclusion of that series, one of the neighbor ladies sitting on her porch was baptized. So it was an amazing experience for our kids. You can see here some of them in their own church, and you can see that they're with a translator. Um, had an amazing experience. There were baptisms, more than 70 baptisms by the end of their trip, and many, many more people are working with the pastors of the local churches now preparing for baptism. We have a tradition at Bass. We call them power weekends. We try to do them almost once a month during uh, the school year, and that involves a closed campus, which means that all of our school family stays on campus that weekend. We usually have a guest speaker, uh, someone from our own conference, someone from outside the conference that comes in. We do a full weekend series, Friday night, church, and a Vespers. Um, maybe some outreach activity as well connected to the theme for the weekend. And then on Saturday night of the Power Weekends, we do our class challenges and our team building activities so that our kids learn to work together and have fun together on campus. At the end of this school year, we had a graduating senior who chose to be baptized as well. That's always one of our desired outcomes for our own students, um, is that they will choose that forever friendship with Jesus before the school year ends. We have another initiative here at Bass because, of course, one of the primary reasons students come here is to graduate from high school. We want to prepare them not just to get through their high school classes, but for life after high school. So we want to do everything we can to empower them to be a success academically. That's pretty important. Families are paying a lot of money for private education, and they should have some very high expectations that their students will learn well and do very well in their classes. Some of the ways we do that is, of course, through our required courses in our science and our math areas. Uh, we had an amazing gift given to us this year. Uh, sometimes our le lectures take the outdoor route. That's kind of fun, too, you'll see. We, uh, through, the various, uh, through a very generous gift from a vendor, we were able to purchase 10 new microscopes for our science lab this year. It was only through the generosity um, of a very deep discount that we were able to do that. So there's many, many ways that people become benefactors and they became, become donors and philanthropists for Bass. You know that we have many needs. We're thankful for everything we have. And we're always thankful when pa people partner with us and help us enhance the program. Besides our required classes, we have a lot of what we call life skill classes. We um, offer a full complement of home ex, which is cooking, sewing, crafts, um, hospitality, and so many more things. Um, we offer an industrial arts class that's been revitalized this year. Our new plant services director is a certified industrial arts teacher and had nine teenage boys rehabbing a faculty home. Just try to imagine that. 
No construction experience at all. He's a very patient man. It was awesome to watch the transformation this year because they had to tear a lot of things out. That was the fun part. Uh, kitchen cabinets, um, that, that's what you see there. They had to repair a lot of the electrical work um, and redo that. They had to repair plumbing leaks, which involved replacing some framing, and then the plumbing, and then, the, then the new insulation and the drywall. We actually had one of our students who has experience finishing drywall. And so he stepped right up and was showing some of the other boys how to do that as well. It's awesome. Um, that house is now, now has a resident faculty member in it. So I wouldn't say it's completely finished, but it's been a great experience. Other optional classes that students can take include digital photography. There you see the teacher um, mentoring one of the students and how to focus and get a close-up shot. There's a lot of different aspects to photography. This counts as one of the fine arts credits that students can have toward graduation. We even do fun things in Bible class. Uh, in the junior Bible class this year for one of their units, they took on Bible characters and acted out the roles that they were reading about in the Bible. So you can see that learning takes a lot of uh, dimensions here at Bass. Just a quick reference, um, our basic goal is to prepare students for college, but our other goal is to exceed what the average is for learning because we know that in God's plan our students can be exceptional. They have the capacity with the talent that they were born with and so for us to nurture that is pretty exciting. This is just a quick stat that tells you the red line is where our students tested on national achievement tests, the ACT, for the class of 2015. The blue line is the Mississippi State average. So that was the class of 2015. The class of 2016, you can see, is as well very far above the Mississippi uh, state average. And we're really proud of our students for that achievement. Another one of our initiatives is to create a second family here. When you share your children with us, that is at great cost because that's their family of origin, and that, those ties should never be broken. They can feel far away from home. You can feel completely like your child's been ripped away from you as a parent. So what we try to do, and believe me, it's not hard, is to love your kids for you and with you. Uh, we have faculty families. We have a lot of different group activities for the whole school. In fact, this photo is from the first day of classes. Do you see a classroom? We, we know that when students first come to our campus, it's very easy for them to get homesick, especially if they don't already have a core group of friends. And so we try to do some team building, off-campus activities. They, have meet, they meet with their classes, the 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders meet all together as a class. They get acquainted, they bond with their sponsors. Um, we try to do a lot of things like that the first couple days. So by the third day of school, when they go to class, they know who their classmates are. They know who the girls in the dorm are. They know who their, their other guys in the dorm are. And we find that we have a lot less homesickness going on. Other things that we do to try to build family is we have uh, class vespers. Um, Pastor Larry and Becky Owens have just been a godsend here on this campus. I know, I'm going to tell on Pastor Larry, but he eats breakfast in the cafeteria almost every morning just because he loves our kids. And so we do a lot of things like that to build friendships. The reason that you see the kids wrapped up in warm clothes is that we had a tornado on Monday of that week. We had a sleet storm while this Vespers was going on. It was supposed to be an outdoor Vespers. We ended up in the, in the library. It was just at freezing. And so we dressed appropriately and had hot chocolate in Mississippi. Other things that we do for fun, essay banquet. There are usually two a year. The SA officers get together with their sponsors and plan activities that would be appropriate and fun and, and just a really good time. Hanging out on center campus, you that have been here all week, you know how easy it is to just be on our center campus. It's beautiful. There's benches for sitting. There's areas for visiting. And so we like that when our kids just hang out. This is a photo of uh, some visitors during Academy Days. They liked the library. We had some activities going on there on Sabbath afternoon. 
Sabbath lunch is a little bit more special than during the week. Kids can linger a little bit. They like to talk. They like to visit. And we like to see that happening, don't we? <laughs> These are two of my favorite boys. I have a lot of those. I have a lot of favorite children, about 85 of them, actually. These are two boys who did not know each other. They come from out of state, far, far away. They both were missing family. They both have estranged um, relationship with brothers. And they both found a brother, a big one and a little one. And they like to tell everybody that they're brothers from another mother. Another one of our initiatives is to develop servant leaders. We don't need to wait at all. Our kids are already assuming and, and wanting to assume leadership roles. How do we do that? You heard the ambassadors uh, sing just a few moments ago. They perform for church services around the conference and beyond, as well as here at home. We have annual concerts from all of our musical groups. They step up and provide the entire uh, music program um, here at, at the Bass Church uh, during Christmas, and then we have a spring concert as well. They also are a touring group who will take their music onto the road and visit your church if you'd like. They give children's stories. Um, our students also provide at least one, and this year, two different weeks of prayer. We had a guest speaker in the fall. Our students usually have a week of prayer in the winter, and Pastor Ramos was very happy to accommodate a request from the students. Could we please do another student week of prayer? And so that's what we did. We were also able to join other academies in the Southern Union this year at a prayer conference at Camp Colloquia in Florida. Um, Pastor Ramos and I were the lucky ones that got to accompany awesome kids to be able to be part of over 300 other teenagers, all not just praising and worshiping God, but learning how they could come back to their home campuses and set their own campuses on fire. Um, we have our own group of prayer warriors. They can all be prayer warriors, but there is a specific initiative this year that Pastor Ramos started for corporate prayer and specific targeted prayer, and that prayer works. We also try to offer extracurricular activities because, you know, when you're a teenager or an adult, you can't just work or study all the time. You need to have a broadened experience. And we like to introduce a lot of different things. So we have some class challenges, some activities here in the gym on Saturday nights. Lay it on the barrel is one of the classic traditions here at Bass. It's awesome. Seniors came prepared. This is called a cockroach, I learned. <laughs> we do some crazy stuff, but it's all in good fun. I had to put this slide in. The principal's daughter tricked him pretty, pretty good. What do you think is Guy's favorite pastime? Yep, you've probably seen a lot of basketball going on, um, even this week during camp meeting. Um, here in the gym, in bad weather, out behind the boys' dorm, there's another basketball hoop for practicing. This happened to be at the beginning of the school year when we went to Peps Point, but lots of opportunities. The seniors extended their visit to college days at Southern and spent a couple extra days, um, went whitewater rafting and a few other things. So this was a picture of, of them bonding as a senior class. We also have gymnast a gymnastics team. Uh, some of your churches have hosted them, and we appreciate that so much. Um, lots of different activities our kids can be involved in. The bells and the hand choir, uh, the, the handbell choir and the uh, band, they also travel with the choir. Just a lot of ways that kids can get involved. Another part of our extracurricular activities, however, is our work program. We have a philosophical belief in work. Um, just imagine, uh, especially as laws are changing and it's getting to be more difficult for students to find work, here on our campus, it's built into part of their daily schedule. We believe philosophically that work is honorable, and we also know that when students work, their life skills are improved, dependability, um, responsibility, doing a job well done and feeling like they can accomplish a task. The second benefic benefit to that, however, is that students are able to work off a part of their tuition bill each month, and we think that's honorable also. 
Um, as I've told a few of them, I'm all, I already have a high school diploma. I don't need one anymore. But you're earning one, and part of that is working to help defray the cost that your parents and others um, are willing to partner with us in helping um, achieve that. So what is our, our desired outcome here at Bass? Obviously, at the end of the year, what we really want to see are students who are graduating, and they are equipped. They're equipped spiritually. They're equipped academically and emotionally to move away from Bass. Breaks our heart, but yet we're happy. So we hope that the program that we have in place and the initiatives that we'll continue to develop and improve on will help facilitate learning and becoming those better whole persons um, ready to serve their man, fellow men, but ideally ready to serve God, not just here on earth, but to prepare for eternity as well. Thank you for your time this morning. Thank you so much for your support of Bass. There is a table at the back if you want to stop and pick up a brochure about Bass. If you know someone who is between the ages or the grades of 7th and 8th grade or high school age and they might benefit from an education here at Bass, a typical uh, assumption is they could never afford it. Let's start a conversation. There are so many people who will partner with us to help on the financial side if a student really wants to be here at Bass. Thank you again for your time. Can we do this? for you and me. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Uh, we are going to have a very quick lesson, uh, Sabbath school lesson, but uh, it's really important that we analyze uh, the important points of the lesson of this week. Uh, I don't know if we can um, uh, have the lesson, uh, the PowerPoint on the screen so we can start. Let's have another prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you 
for who you are, and we thank you so much for um, sending your Holy Spirit to be here with us. We ask you to bless as we um, think about uh, the lessons that we learn from Sabbath school lesson this week. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, we have, uh, this is the, the, main, the main verse uh, that we have for the week. It's Second Peter 1, verses 5 through 7. And it says, For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness mutual affection, and to mutual affection love. So we're going to go right into uh, what is so important about this uh, verse. I don't know what happened there. It went out. Um, some people think about this list, and they think, well, I have to work on those things. And that's the first mistake that we can make, to think that we can by ourselves, work something out that we can have those qualities because we are working on it. Do you understand how serious some Christians, they go to the list and say, well, I really need that, so I'm going to try to work on knowledge. I'm going to work on uh, perseverance. I'm going to work on love. Can we really produce that by ourselves? We can't. So this is known as Peter's letter of virtues. But some people think about, well, if it's a letter, then I need to go step by step, and it should be as high as I can get in the letter. You know, I'll be safe. So it's our tendency to think that as we go up, we are working on our salvation, that salvation by works and not by grace. But it is important to have those virtues. But how can we do that? The, the qualities, they're all qualities of the follower of Christ, actually. So they are qualities of the person who follows Christ. If you reflect the character of Christ in you, you will have those qualities, okay? Now, it's very interesting that love is both on the spiritual gifts of the fruit of the Spirit from Paul and also here on this list from Peter, okay? The Apostle Paul starts with love when describing the fruit of the Spirit and Peter ends with love when describing growth in the Christian life. Why it is important to remember that God's agape love is both the foundation and the goal of the Christian life. Why love is so important? Because without love, it's going to be just a checklist. Faith, check. Brotherly kindness, check. Godliness, check. I go to church. It's not a checklist. It's something that we get from Christ. We cannot produce ourselves that list, especially love. Everything that we do needs to be surrounded by the love of Christ. So why is the truth of Second Peter Chapter 1, verses 2 through 4, so important to remember as we diligently seek to make progress in our Christian journey. So, in other words, if you want to avoid to make that from verses 5 through 7, a checklist, things you have to work on it, we need to understand verses 2 through 4. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him. So let's stop right there. That huge list that He's giving on verse 5, 6, and 7. First, 
on verses 2 through 4, he's explaining how to get that. But sometimes we forget and we go to the list, trying to work on the list. And we forget this part over there. His divine power has given us all things that we need. Amen? So we get that from Christ because of his divine power. Not because of my own power. So he's explaining that beforehand. That's why we can never take a text out of the context of the whole chapter, what he's trying to do. And how do we get that divine power working in us? Through the knowledge of him. You get to know him, you get his divine power, and you get the qualities of Christ. Does that make sense? Let me repeat that. So, you get to know Him with the personal relationship every day, talking to Him, praying, studying the Bible. And then, His divine power automatically comes to you, and you start to reflect the characteristics and qualities of Christ, which is that list from verses 5 through 7. We have to understand the Word of God the way God wants us to understand, using always His power to grow in Christ. It's not our own power. Okay, Philippians 2, verses 12 through 13 says, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as my, in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And the right translation there is awe. And if you stop on verse 12, you're like, oh, see, I have to work my own salvation. I have to do it my own way. Verse 13. That's the danger of picking just one verse and making a doctrine out of one verse. See verse 13. For it is God who, what, works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Amen? So God is the one working in you. You see a worker there building. That's God. He is doing. That's his job, not my job. And he works in you the will, the desire that we don't have by ourselves. That's not natural to us to have this desire to follow him and he also works the action he gives you the desire and helps you with the action plan praise the lord for that and everything is based on the list from peter is based on faith faith in christ is so important uh, have you ever become discouraged as you consider your progress in the christian as a christian I have. Who hasn't? How can we avoid the trap of becoming preoccupied with self? Many times we just become preoccupied with what I need to do, with my problems. And we forget to look at Christ's life and His sacrifice, what He suffered to give us eternal life. Now let's end uh, the lesson those 15 verses from chapter 1 of 2 Peter, those 15 verses uh, that begin the chapter, they are, they are full of information. We, would, we could spend here two hours talking about it. And it ends here, the lesson with immortality of the soul. So he's talking about, oh, I'm about to leave, so I think it is right as long as I am in this tent, talking about his body, to stir up by reminding you, knowing that shortly I must put off my tent, just as our Lord Jesus Christ showed me. Is he talking here about the immortality of the soul? Of course not, okay? He's talking about not his body as a shell and his immortal being needs to go somewhere. We cannot take one Bible verse out of the context and make a doctrine of it. You have to look at the whole Bible, okay? The New Testament has many verses talking about the resurrection and how important that is. If immortality of the soul is true, then what about resurrection? 
It makes no sense, okay? Now, if we go to Matthew 27, verses 50 to 53, we read, And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn into two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked, and the rocks were split, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised, and coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. There is importance in the resurrection of Christ. Our whole faith is based on the resurrection of Christ. Amen? And Peter, of course, is facing death by the end of um, this chapter here, and he is not afraid. In the same way, we have to face death, if that's the case, with no fear. Because we believe in a powerful and amazing God. Amen? Knowing that shortly I must put off my tent, just as our Lord Jesus Christ showed me, moreover, I will be careful to ensure that you always have a reminder of these things after my decease. Peter's preoccupation was that the church would stay strong in the faith of Jesus. He was not worried about the way he was going to die, and we all know that he died a terrible death. The title of the lesson was Be Who You Are. And I want to tell you, be who were you made by God to be, a partaker of the divine nature of Christ. Amen? How can you be a partaker of the divine nature of Christ? By the knowledge of Him. How do we get that? By a personal relationship with Christ. May God bless you. I'd like to invite our student Priya to do closing prayer for us. Be for prayer. <laughs> Oh, Lord, we are touched by the lesson that we heard today, God. We learned that all along you were with us in our journey. Help us to put our trust in you. Help us to put our present and our future lives in your hands, God. We know that in your hands we are safe. Help us to cling to you, Lord. Through your death, our sins have been defeated god lord your word is powerful when you called lazarus from the grave he came out alive lord and you so also called us out of our darkness and our death back into life help us to be faithful to the end i pray for every person who is here lord and for every family that is represented lord i pray that your presence will be with them god amen You may be seated. We are going to take a 10-minute break. Good morning to you all. We're going to resume at 1030 with the divine service. The bathrooms are over to my left, your right. Uh, we'll begin the divine service at 1030. Thank you. <laughs> 